whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you, team. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I am a lecturer at Lancaster University. I've taken part in previous initiatives uh, by team, and I'm happy to be here. Today I give um, I give my talk a different focus than last time, and uh, I'll try and give you some tips on um, how to um, learn a language proficiency effectively um, based on my own experience. OK, so let's see if the slides move on. Yeah, so I'll be on my own experience and I'll see if I can tell you something that may be helpful to you in future. OK, so this is my upbringing. I'm Italian from Milan. I traveled a lot as a child with my grandparents, so I, I've been through different countries and cultures, exposed to different food. My mom was a language language teacher, so obviously you know, it was a bit in the genes, the, this, this propensity to learn languages. And so as a result of this, I developed an interest in other languages and other cultures. And then um, already as a child, a young adult, um, I studied English, French and German in school, so formal education. And then I started to travel. Uh, so I, I traveled as a child, but as an adult, I continued. So my first experience of living abroad was in the Black Forest. Um, in Germany and I lived there for a year doing a European voluntary service. It was really, uh, really beautiful, really, a really interesting experience. Then I came back to Italy to study uh, psychology, um, my degree and then um, my academic journey because I, I started the academic career. My academic journey took me to many different countries. So when we talk about, you know, sciences and language, Obviously, an academic career definitely um, helps with traveling uh, um, and being getting exposed to different languages and cultures. So I moved to the Max Planck Institute uh, in Leipzig in Germany because I obtained the research fellowship. Um, and then I moved to the University of Sussex for my PhD. Um, and then I moved to Berlin uh, for my postdoc. So it was a collaboration between Berlin and Princeton. So I got to see both Berlin and Princeton and spend some time uh, in both locations. And then I landed in Lancaster for my uh, lectureship. So that's just to give you a very brief overview. But let's delve into uh, learning languages. And here I'll put um, a distinction between formal education and immersion. And we will see how they uh, made a difference to me. I'll give you examples of specific languages. So for example, as I mentioned before, I learned German in school. OK, so formal education, but then um, when I immersed myself into the German culture, I was 19 and I moved to the Black Forest for this um, European voluntary service. That's what led me to proficiency. So being immersed in the, in the, cult, in the country and uh, talking to people. So that's what made my German fluent proficient. Um, and it was a really interesting experience in terms of you know, uh, personal enrichment. And then the other example is with Portuguese. So because I've always been passionate about languages, I uh, started, I, I learned Portuguese for three years while I was studying at university. So I was studying in psychology, but in my free time, I would take uh, Portuguese tuitions um, uh, because I really loved uh, this language. Um, and uh, in this case, I never really moved to Portugal, but the teaching method that my teacher was using was really, really effective. Um, so she, uh, um, she was Portuguese, first of all, so native speaker, and then she in, um, engaged us in conversation, so she made us speak. Um, she would try and only have Portuguese spoken in class, so we were not allowed to, to speak in Italian with each other. She taught us many common expressions, everyday expressions such as proverbs and idioms, uh, which are really relevant, you know, they, they are a sign of profic proficiency actually, and she talked a lot about her culture. Uh, so this teaching method proved really helpful in, um, you know, becoming proficient in Portuguese and mastering the language at, the, at a level that is not just, um, you know, school knowledge. Um, so this is a different type of immersion, which doesn't um, imply uh, going and living in the country, but it was very effective. And then uh, if my slides move uh, and then the final example that is relevant because it's uh, English. I had very good school English education. Um, I, I, my high school was specialized in languages, so I had quite good tuitions. We had conversations, uh, conversation classes alongside grammar, etc. And my uh, scientific English was also quite good because from an early um, uh, age, um, um, I mean, as a young adult, I, I went to conferences, scientific conferences. So my, my uh, scientific English uh, to talk about my research was quite good. However, 
my English was limited. I mean, it sounds uh, silly, but it was because uh, I didn't have this fluency in conversation. And what what made it was really um, coming to the UK for my PhD, getting immersed in the country, and that made me uh, proficient. Okay, so these are a few examples from uh, my own experience. And so here I try to put together a few tips uh, in case you find any of them uh, helpful. So nowadays we have um, apps that are allow us to, to start learning a language. And I think it's quite a good idea to start with, with apps, to start learning. And uh, uh, because you get a sense, you get a feel for the language, you see if you like it. Um, so it's quite a good idea to just get started very, very easily and simply with, with an app. Um, it's also a good idea to learn from books on your own. Um, so it's all good stuff. But at some point, if you decide you really want to learn a language uh, in more depth, it's really helpful if you can take classes with an actual teacher, OK, because there's interaction and, you know, there's, you know, lo lonely uh, learning is, is a bit more difficult because you don't get feedback. Um, and then um, that's not enough in my view. So in, in, on, in addition to, to taking classes, um, it's good if you can find opportunities to um, have conversations. And believe me, conversation doesn't, um, it doesn't matter how proficient you are. Uh, in Germany, there is this concept of tandem partner where uh, you pair with someone, for example, I'm Italian, I want to learn English, and I pair with an English person who wants to learn Italian. As long as we are at a similar level of proficiency, either both beginners or both intermediate, it will work. OK, so if you're a beginner, the conversation will be simple. And having a conversation in the two languages uh, with the native speaker of the language you're learning is really, really helpful. So, um, so find opportunities to actually practice the language you're learning is key. OK, and obviously, I mean, the obvious tip is actually, you know, if you can move to the country where the language is spoken, that's absolutely the best, uh, the best type of immersion. And um, so it's the best way to learn a language and also to learn about a different culture. Um, and then I have, you know, it's a very short talk, so I have some take home messages uh, based on my experience. So no matter how proficient or not you become, don't be afraid. Uh, just go ahead. Uh, learning for a language gives you access to a different culture and definitely, uh, definitely opens your mind. So I, I recommend learning a foreign language uh, to anyone, no matter how talented they are. And this uh, opening your mind works in ways that you cannot get uh, by using a lingua franca to communicate. So you can go to, um, I don't know, Spain and, and talk in English and learn about Spanish culture by talking in English, but it's not the same as communicated in the um, in the language of the country you're visiting. Um, and that's it uh, from my side. Explore and enjoy. Uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, uh, I'm here. Many thanks, uh, Francesca, for your very uh, insightful presentation. And also, I uh, particularly liked what you said at the end, how using another language will uh, you give you insights into a culture that speaking a language can or will not. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, if you only speak English, then often your impressions of another country will be shaped by those who are telling you about the countries in English. And so if you know their culture, if you can talk to the people in a more authentic way, I completely agree with you. Uh, I also remember what uh, what you also mentioned sort of ties in with what uh, Richard was saying in his, at the end of his talk, that by actually interacting as a uh, with scientists in a, in a, in a 